I think we can all relate to a boring day in history class. Imagine the potential for all of us to have an entertaining day in class if the teachers didn't skip over the historical story of the digesting robotic duck from the 1700s. In today's Illogical Gates, I plan to give you guys that exact story. One day, we will cover the marvelous inventions leading up to modern computing, including ancient automatic machines, or automata, punch card programmable looms, the analytical engine, and more. But today, we are going to talk about Jean de Vaucasson, who did in fact help push the world towards modern computing through his work on the first design of an automatic loom years before Joseph Jacquard even, who's famous for the fully functional automatic Jacquard loom that was even programmable via punch cards like future computers would be. Now, you may be wondering about this point if you clicked on the wrong video, thinking to yourself, I swear the title was something to do with the digesting duck. Well, you did not click on the wrong video. So let's get into talking about this crazy invention from almost 300 years ago. Jean de Vaucasson of France created many automata machines, including in 1739 this robotic digesting duck. This robotic bird had greater than 400 parts that were movable specifically in each wing. The duck could accept water and grain, flap its wings, move its head and bill, and even appear to defecate out the food it was given. Made of gold-plated copper, the duck was about the size of a real duck, and Jacquas claimed that located inside the duck was a, quote, small chemical laboratory that would do the actual digesting. To handle all the mechanics of the robotic device, the duck was mounted above a huge base that contained the inner workings allowing for the advanced bird movements. Even though the duck couldn't do anything crazy fancy like a barrel roll, the digesting duck was shown around to many interested parties, including the famous French Enlightenment writer and historian Voltaire. The robotic bird must have been an impressive sight, as Voltaire said the following after experiencing the duck. Without Vaucanson's duck, you have nothing to remind you of the glory of France. While we can't hear the sarcasm in his voice, it pretty clearly was. A few models of the duck have been made in modern times with some functionality, though this one here is a bit realistic looking and may actually have less movement capability than the original. The channel Billy J. Jackson gives us an artistic animation look of what the insides of the duck could look like, though this is likely not exactly how the real digesting duck functioned. As amazing as it is that the duck is estimated to have over 1,000 moving parts, Jacques was quite focused on this digestion portion of the duck. He apparently needed some way of modeling the duck's intestines and moving the waste around, and so he created what is credited as the world's first rubber tubing. So yes, the world's first rubber tubing can be accredited to an automatic 18th century robotic duck that could poop. It's about this point in the video where the story takes a turn for the worse. After working on the digesting duck, Jacques moved on to more serious matters, putting his effort towards the automatic loom. Though after presenting the automation, silk workers revolted out of fear of their jobs being lost to this automatic loom. Vaucasson was not sympathetic of the loom workers, as he proceeded to set up the machine in such a way that it was, and I quote from the man himself, A loom manned by a donkey in order to prove that a horse, an ox, or an ass can make a cloth more beautiful and much more perfect than the most able silk workers. So maybe he was asking for a bad time. He fled his homeland due to threats from silk workers, meaning the automatons ended up in the hands of others. One German owner of the used-to-digest robotic duck noted the following in 1805. The Vaucansonian automatons were utterly paralyzed. A duck without feathers stood like a skeleton, still devoured the oats briskly enough, but had lost its power of digestion. Unfortunately, over 100 years later from the date the duck was unveiled to the world, an automatic machine maker and magician named Jean Eugene Robert Houdin, great name by the way that I'm likely mispronouncing but don't really care because it sounds hilarious, deeply examined the interior workings of the duck and found that the pooping mechanism was faked the entire time. Really, there was an area in the duck that stored prepared pellets of breadcrumbs that had been dyed green. And come 1879, the belief is that the duck was destroyed in a fire at the museum it was held. All that remained were the two destroyed wings. It is noted on the Wikipedia page that Jacques de Vaucasson dreamed of a design one day that would have real digestion. So from the heavens above, Jacques smiled down in 2002, not at the sight of modern weaving techniques or modern programming and computing, no. He smiled when he saw Wilm de Voy showing the world his cloaca machine. This machine was actually capable of taking food, digesting it, and creating excrement. There's a more modern version of the cloaca machine that catches the produced excrement in a vacuum sealed bag and is sold to quote unquote art collectors. Though I find the name art collector to be used in quite a weird way in this instance. 
the baggies have been released in a series and apparently also always sold out. So that's that, the history of the robotic digesting duck that continues to influence each and every individual human being that is watching this video. This has been Illogical Gates with Jake. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys at the next gate. <coughs> Jacques de Vacasson. 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 <coughs>